Welcome back, Cube community. We are at the AI Security Summit, powered by Sneak and AI Engineer. This is Jackie McGuire, your principal analyst and practice lead for security at the Cube. I am lucky enough to be joined again by Manoj Nair. Manoj, thank you for coming back and talking to us again. Thank you. Uh, we are here to talk about a really exciting announcement that Sneak made today. Uh, the feature is called Evo, uh, and it's, I, I shouldn't say it's a feature because it's a whole bunch of things that aim to solve a lot of different problems that you've observed yourself um, kind of on this journey the last couple years through AI. Um, so I guess starting from a very high level, could you give us kind of a very high level overview of what Evo is and how you decided that that was what you needed to build? So uh, thank you for having me back again. Uh, super excited to talk about Evo. You know, this has been a passion project for over a year, and a year ago I wouldn't have told you this is what we're building. <laughs> so Evo by Sneak is the world's first agentic security orchestrator. So what does that mean? You know, there are agentic orchestrators now. When Devin came out from Cognition, it was an agentic orchestrator for doing software development tasks. There are others in other industries, marketing and customer experience. And what it is is like, oh, there are individual agents. You want to only give them just enough agency to be specialized like a superhero at a specific task. But the challenge was so big as we went about it that we said, oh, no, you need to this industry doesn't have agentic orchestrators specialized in security mm -hmm. and the speed and the whole, you know, and we'll talk more about that. All of that led us to say, hey, we need a agentic security orchestrator mm -hmm. and some very specialized agents. So it's a whole system that includes both of that, specialized at taking on, you know, securing these new age applications. So and I think you had a pretty good Marvel yeah. analogy, right? <laughs> I, I like my, my Marvel Avengers and uh, yeah. uh, you know, so we think about like Nick Fury and mm -hmm. Marvel, like this is what Evo's agentic orchestrator is trying to do. Yeah. And the system is all the Avengers, so you need a specialized agent and has superpowers to go do red teaming. You need a specialized agent that knows how to like really think about it, like step back and look at the whole design of the system. And so defeating, you know, this non predictability. The way I think about it is this is a different set of applications than software ever before. Yeah. You and I talked about, you know, writing code before. Code mm -hmm. is rules. Yeah. So all software is rules based. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly you have an LLM at the heart of the system. We love it. It's brilliant. You ask it the same <laughs> thing again and again, gives you different answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that defeats all the rules of software because yeah. now it's not following rules. It's stochastic and non-deterministic or I love an analogy one of our customers gave. It's, uh, it's like taking a cat on a leash. It's never going to walk on the same straight line twice. Yeah. So how do you secure that? Yeah. So we said, no, we're going to build a system. Superheroes and somebody who's an eye in the sky like orchestrating these superheroes. Yeah, um, and you built a bunch of autonomous task agents that do very specific things. So can you talk about, I guess, one, what some of those different things are and why it's important to kind of isolate those capabilities from one another? So, you know, we, general philosophy on agents is you, you want them to be specialized, mm -hmm. but only give them enough agency and ability to do that particular task. Mm -hmm. But we are also building deep expertise in these agents. So we're training a red teaming agent to figure out how do you break this uh, agentic application with an LLM and when does it reveal the RAG database with proprietary information that is not supposed to. So it's trying lots of different tactics mm -hmm. in there. That some are dynamic testing tactics, some are just really using LLMs themselves to try and like do some game theory to figure out Okay, what, what can I do to create an environment where it's going to exhibit something? Mm -hmm. But then you want to you know, start with a discovery agent that really shows most customers don't even know. I've been in, in meetings where the CISO and CTO are on the call with me and ask the question, how many agents or LLMs do you have in production? And the answer from the security team is zero. The answer from the CTO is thousands. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm like playing. And the you security know, team goes, what? Yeah, well, exactly. So I'm like the therapist in the middle. Like, yeah. oh, wait. So we said, we'll start. The discovery agent is very specialized at finding very, like, Models are code. You can download models from Hugging Face, two million models. 
we know many of these are being poisoned by nation states. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure the people, as they download it, we can find that there's deep seek running and maybe it's risky and here's the risk level. So there's a different agent that is actually figuring out the model risk and, and then there's MCP. Mm -hmm. And there's a joke like, you know, the S in MCP stands for security. And so yeah. we're like, oh, MCP is powerful. We're bringing data and old context from old tools to the new tools. But there's How a huge risk in MCP, huge, right? Huge you reach risk. out to the server and it sends a response and those responses can be malicious. It, it, it needs to be continuously protected and, mm -hmm. and it's chaining together multiple different kinds of risks. We found uh, the toxic flow attack mm -hmm. pattern that the GitHub MCP server had an exploit yep. potential, and that that is a prompt injection plus bringing this you know improper access. These some of these problems, by the way, existed in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The speed of AI and these connections is chaining together risks from old problems plus new problems. Yeah. And so our agents are uh, you know really experts at doing things that are unique. Uh, the last part for non-determinism, and I don't think we see a lot of people talk about it, you think about how do you defeat something that breaks the rules of code, but well, you go before the code's generated. Mm -hmm. Go to the design phase, and how do I create a secure by design threat model, mm -hmm. and then figure out all the things that will probably cause the issues, mm -hmm. and take care of that first before you go off red teaming, and then finally, when you're deploying it in production, have a guardrail, have observation on what's going on between agents and agents and LLMs. The beauty of the software is you can modify the behavior very quickly mm -hmm. if you are in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> and so here's another an analogy for, for Evo. I was thinking about where else in our world do we feel you need humans who have to deal with a lot of information coming at that, mm -hmm. and you have very intelligent systems. So we found this, you know, the OODA loop, Mm -hmm. uh, that the Top Gun, you know, fighter pilots are trained for. Yeah, they're sitting in a Gen Five fighter pilot, and they're, you know, they're they have to react fast. So, mm -hmm. you know, observe. So that is finding all the data. Mm -hmm. Orient, like figure out. Okay, this is the policy. This is what we're doing. Then you figure out how you decide, like, and then you act, right? Yeah. And so, this those principles are built into Evo. Mm -hmm. It's like it is helping our persona to go and defend it, and I can talk more about that persona. Yeah, I think one of the things I always try to highlight about um, agentic AI and AI in general is that um, some of the things that have protected enterprises from their bad practices, like, oh yeah, we have PII in places it maybe shouldn't be, but it's only a couple files out of several million, right? right. AI is really good at finding anomalies. So when we look at like the Anthropic Threat Report and they're saying, hey, attackers are using AI to do reconnaissance to thrive off the land. They're not living off the land anymore, they're thriving. They're, yeah. <laughs> um, that they're also like the needle in the haystack. AI can be a magnet for those needles and it can find them very quickly. So I think to your point, we need to kind of upend the way we've thought about security because by the time an alert shows up in your SIM, Oh, too late. A million things could have happened yeah. because these things happen in milliseconds, right? So, um, so we were talking before we started about this new kind of role that you've identified, yeah. uh, the AI security engineer. So, can you talk a little bit more about that and how that's going to differ going forward from an AI engineer or a security engineer? Yeah. No, this is uh, you know we started as you know Snake's whole uh, journey has been how do you enable devs with context and intelligence mm -hmm. to take care of security issues and that completely changes this whole paradigm of how I can secure something before it goes in production. Mm -hmm. The learning for us from that is the devs, when they're given too much security context, mm -hmm. they have you know toil and they get overwhelmed. Yeah. In the AI space, there's just we talked about all these fast-moving things that are coming together. Mm -hmm. You can't throw all that context in front of the dev. So yeah. we saw in some of our leading customers, they have this role AI security engineer. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they come from the platform teams. Sometimes they come from security engineering teams. They are, they are trained and they understand LLMs and they understand AI. So just like good AppSec engineers wrote apps, mm -hmm. these people are people who understand AI and ML. The problem was these were the leading companies in the world, so not enough of understanding. Mm -hmm. But their job was to let us figure out what uh, models are 
you know, secure to use. Let's deploy the guardrails. Let's make sure that you are observing the traffic. And the toil on them was very high. Like this, yeah. there isn't enough tooling to go and uh, I did a side by side and like it was days to go figure out, hey, are the devs using MCP servers that could have toxic flow? And can you generate a threat model? And they're trying to sit on paper and pen. So the role's an expert. How do you build the tooling for that expert was the next, uh, you know, like that's how part of how Evo came about. Awesome. So once you've figured this all out, you figured out how we should be building these, how to install guardrails. One of the other abilities that Evo has, which is probably arguably one of the best because people hate writing policy is natural language policy creation. So can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, Cause just from a, I know people hate policy, but my experience, you know, doing RCAs and responding to incidents is that generally either a lack of policy or lack of following the policy is prevalent in like upwards of 90% of incidents I've been involved in. So, um, is this was this a scale thing? Was it like without natural language policy creation, we're never going to be able to create enough policies? What was the kind of motivation? No, I think it's just uh, some of it is. This is the uh, you know you and I talked about this judo mind trick. Like mm -hmm. just you know there's a Jedi mind trick. I call it the judo trick. <laughs> As an adversity, we're trying to protect against this whole nature of LLMs and agents, but make that your friend. Mm -hmm. What are they good at? They're large language models. They're good at understanding languages. As you said, humans. They'll get you know into this. Well, what policy language can we use? Is it Rego versus this? Mm -hmm. Take all that out. We can generate the policy language. Mm -hmm. Just express what you're trying to do in the way that you would naturally do that. Mm -hmm. So for me, as the you know the, my team who was building this, I wanted to make sure they got the best AI tools, but they were not connecting to MCP servers that had toxic flows. Yeah. I can write that in a sentence and just send it out, and yeah. so it just <laughs> makes you know a whole bunch of now think about this persona is to move fast, the busy work goes away, mm -hmm. and that's in generally like a power of AI. So let's take busy work away. It's like four uh, Zoom meetings exactly. you don't have to have now, right? You don't right? have to have that. You don't have to be like debating. You don't have to talk across teams and. That was it. So, yeah. And then reporting's on the other side of that. So Evo also helps take care of reporting, right? So what are some of those capabilities? No one's report is something that the other person saw and said, oh, I, I want this exact same report, right? <laughs> this, uh, we have all built systems where it's like, well, could it be that? Could it be this? So I said, well, we can generate the report the way you want it because mm -hmm. our power is we're sitting on an amazing data and we're sitting on top of the Sneak platform that's deployed at you know almost 5,000 customers and we're able to get all of the intelligence and metadata from that. Mm -hmm. what could We could render it with whatever is actually the most important thing for you. Or if you are a team of AI security engineers and you want to create a specific view for a CISO to go look at it or take something to the board, mm -hmm. that would have very different details. Just express it, we'll go create it for you. Yeah. That's amazing. All right, so if customers want to get started and explore Evo, it's ready today? It's uh, it's the hands of our design partners, so that's what we're doing. We've worked with them to get to this point. They mm -hmm. had access to all the different agents we're building, mm -hmm. and uh, you can apply to be a design partner. So if you go to evoai.sneak.io, yeah. or you go to labs.sneak.io, you can apply to be a design partner. And our, you know, we're gradually going to now take the next milestone. We have amazing design partners, some of the biggest in the world. So it's a very different startup. So this is a startup working with the biggest and the fastest moving companies in the space. Yeah. Four of the top five banks in the Evident AI Index, the leading AI banks, are amazing. our customers. So our ability to work with this kind of customer base to fast iterate and build a enterprise grade solution mm -hmm. that is very unique. And the other aspect is we want this to be very open. We yeah. want an entire ecosystem to be able to leverage Evo and that's some of the next things we're doing. Awesome, all right, last question. If you were gonna build another Avenger <laughs> for AI innovation, what would your new Avenger, uh, you don't have to name them because that's the hard part, but what capabilities do you think the next AI Avenger is gonna need? Hawkeye. <laughs> Hawkeye? Yeah. I think you need the, the, at the end, there's this, you know, the bow and arrow of going and finding that sniper shot. Like, there are 
a lot of attacks. Unfortunately, the bad guys have weaponized all of our issues and they're using AI more. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to go figure out the exploit that you don't know about. Yeah. What, I want to find a zero day mm -hmm. and Evo is right there where it can go do that. So yeah, yeah Hawkeye. Amazing. Well, Manoj, thank you so much for sitting down with me twice today. This was really awesome and I think people could take quite a bit away from this. It's great. Thank Thanks. you so much. Awesome. For theCUBE, I'm Jackie McGuire. Stay tuned for more news and analysis from your leader in tech news.